Hi, this is Shannon from the Pier 54 General Hospital Fan Podcast. Be sure to check out our show notes and our website for some information about an exciting General Hospital Fan Giveaway. We've partnered with another podcast to give away a signed General Hospital script, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi! Hi! Welcome to the General Hospital recap for March 16th through 20th. I'm so glad we watch on Hulu. Me too. There were so many people complaining about they didn't get to see it or is interrupted. Where can they find it? And I thought, oh, thank God for Hulu. Well, not just that. I'm just glad that I don't have cable because it's been a really difficult week to just stay away from things. And I've been doing a more conscious effort of staying off of Facebook and I get my news from a news source. Maybe. (laughs) But speaking of Facebook. Oh, it was mentioned this It was. Week. It was. And I thought, well, first of all, that's crazy because I've talked about how they don't use the name specifically all the time. But also, Brooklyn is way too young to be relying on Facebook. For what? For all of her stuff. It's on, she would be on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. I don't feel like she'd be posting stuff on Facebook. If she did an Instagram story, you can automatically share it to your Facebook stories. Maybe. My bigger question is, why are she and Lulu friends on Facebook? Maybe she doesn't have her settings set right. But remember, she said that she didn't public, like she didn't post it publicly. Like it would have to have been. Oh, I thought she said she didn't post it on her singing one, but she posted it on hers. Okay. So you're right. So she might have had the settings set wrong, but just anyone can see it. Cause I cannot imagine her and Lulu being friends. No. In fact, I would think she'd be blocked. I'm surprised. She well, find exactly. Her at all. There are so many things yeah. that Brooklyn could have done. Wait, I'm sorry, Lulu. Why wasn't she arrested? The cops were in the room when they saw her throw a glass at Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And no. Lulu was totally at fault for this. I know that we. She was totally at fault, and she was just dumb. First of all, what grown woman acts like that? I don't care how mad you and I got at Out each other. Out of their twenties, we would not be throwing champagne and glasses at each other. Not over anything. that. Not over that. I don't think there's anything. I don't either. I really don't. I mean, I could see being angry enough at someone that you want to, but you turn around and walk away, especially in a public place. And especially when you see that your daughter's daughter's Baby. dad yeah. videotaping you. Right. And you know that you're in the middle of a custody hearing. So you just gave him all the ammunition he needs to show that you are an immature jerk and you're not going to have full custody. He's totally going to use that. Oh, of course he is. And all the witnesses are going to be able to say, Lulu started it when she threw the champagne in her face. Yep. And, okay, they might have exchanged words, although I think Lulu did start the entire thing by oh yeah, exposing it. And, okay, Brooklyn should have. She should have been smarter. I mean, that was stupid. Yes. Because when you're at work, no matter what, you are very careful about yep. what information you are putting out there. Not even just something as confidential as that, but you don't want to get a coworker in a picture or, you know, even where you're at at most right. parts. Like, you yep. don't want to give away too much information online. It's all about safety. So for her Absolutely. to say, I'm sitting in my office at ELQ, like, she basically gave the address of where she's at and then scanned the whole desk like that. That's not responsible. Well, she did a good media. job of staging it. She just should have made sure that she had any confidential papers covered. Yes. Because she did a really good layout of like the different folders mm-hmm. and, you her know, paper I, weight was cute. I think that her intention is absolutely, she's trying to get ELQ up to the current age with social media and getting engagement and stuff like that. Right. It just, the first time it happened to blow up in her face and it's just, I mean, even with, If I take a picture of my computer screen while I'm working, I don't even have, like, my email's not showing. Right. You know, I might have it up in the tab where you could see, oh, she has her email open. I don't even have houses shown. Exactly. You know, it's, I mean, I pretty much keep it as vague as possible. So. Because that's the responsible business-like thing to do. Yeah. And I don't know how she forgot about that paper to begin with. Ned was very clear 
this is super important. It needs sent out right now. Yep. And do not let anyone else see it. I understand not thinking someone's stalking your Facebook and going to see that and publicize all about it. But shouldn't you have done that before you organized your desk? Yes. <laughs> like, come on. They both they both definitely have their faults. Right. Like, but Brooklyn they both definitely have their own blame. Yeah. No, I'm with you that Brooklyn did not deserve to be arrested. She's going to get enough. From her family, she doesn't need that added and on top Chase of it. Chase knows that that was just a reflex. Yes. I mean, this poor guy keeps getting beat up by Brooklyn. Say, it might be that it's not the first time, which is why he's arresting her. But but it was very obvious that she was the receiver of. Yes. I mean, she's the one hiding behind a table when someone else is throwing glass. I mean, she at threw her. down. She did. <laughs> she Valentine, did. like, I don't see her posing up right here. <laughs> yes, that was so funny. And they were using the B word more than they have in quite some time. It really, it really was. They're really liking to have girls fight right now. Yeah. I mean, we just had Willow and Nell and now Brooklyn and Lulu. Brooklyn should not have said that stuff about Dante though. No, that, no, she knows how to push the buttons for sure. Yeah. But Lulu did. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. It's hard to be mature sometimes when someone just blew up your whole family. I mean, that's a million dollar deal right there. It's not like you cost me 10 bucks. Well, and then when. Brooklyn said something about, like, I just started this job. And she's like, well, that your daddy gave you. Um, Your daddy gave you the haunted star, Lulu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know why you're still a reporter, but you're not a very good one. So someone gave you that job, too. No, she earned it through writing about cheese, Amanda. No. <laughs> but okay. They're just hard-pressed for reporters. I'm really disappointed that Ned is going to take advantage of Michael being on paternity leave, which, first of all, he is within his right to take paternity mm-hmm. leave and return to his position. Right. But, or it's a family company and blah, 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 blah. I'm sure that there's things. But that's low. It is It's low. not like he's just abandoning to go run off with Sasha. Exactly. He's taking a step back to focus on his kid and to get his life stable and Ned has taken a break from ELQ before when he was doing all the Eddie Main stuff. How mm-hmm. would he have felt if he came back and they completely shunned him out of his proper place? Right. I don't like their writing with Ned. He's either mushy and he doesn't care, or he's being this jerk that isn't really his character either. He's too cutthroat. Yeah. Di- no, I want, don't want to say diabolical. Manipulative. Yes. Scheming. Right. And that's yeah. not how he is in normal life. And it also wasn't realistic that Olivia instantly got that and didn't even yell at Lulu or anyone, went straight upstairs to start talking to Ned. But she doesn't know that Lulu's the one who released it. Oh, it didn't say it on the article? Okay. Because remember, wasn't it, it was Peter's decision. Yes. Because that's what Lulu said was it was Peter's decision. And so... I don't know if the article said Lulu's name. It might not have, but when she finds out. Oh, there's going to be But first of all, Olivia pay. really needs to stop being so snippy with Lulu moving on. I know. Your and son is the one that divorced her. And she was heartbroken and devastated and fought it until the last minute. Exactly. So mm-hmm. you've got to. Right. Yep. And it's not like she's out with a different guy every day introducing the kids to him. She's been with Dustin for a while now. Right. And. I feel like, for the most part, their boundaries are pretty appropriate, mm-hmm. except for Charlotte saying sleepovers with. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. But it wasn't necessarily inappropriate. That's what they were having was a sleepover. Exactly. So, I don't know. We'll see where that all goes. I feel like they're trying to bring ELQ back, so there'll be lots of storyline there. I'm glad to see that Willow was not on board with marrying Michael loved Chase's reaction. I don't agree that Willow wasn't on board. I think that she thought about it and was like, um, yeah, that's not the best thing. I don't feel like it's dead yet. Oh, it's not. But then Michael was like, Sasha had this original idea. And I said, um, no, we did it in the nineties and it did not work. Well, (laughs) talk to Alexis and her opinion and Jax and Chloe. Oh wait, she's dead. Okay. Can't. (laughs) I liked Carly's reaction to it, though. Sasha was like, I'm sorry, you're not going to like me. And she was like, oh, no, no, I love you. You are awesome. That's exactly the way I would have planned it out. So. She had a really, that was a really good bonding moment for it them. It was cute. They cannot screw this up. Right. I agree. Michael actually loves her. Yes. They need to make that work. 
I didn't understand Nell's visit. I understand she was allowed to visit. But when it says supervised visit, I just assume that means someone from the court is supervising. That was the impression I was under Not as well. Michael supervising because there's obviously going to be tension and issues between right. Michael and her. So that's not in Wiley's best interest. I thought it was always like a private supervision. Like Michael actually has to leave. Exactly. Yeah. So he obviously couldn't be having friends over also. And then she only hung out for what, 15 minutes. And then she left and said, well, I'll be back later for my scheduled visit. No, it's scheduled. So either this was your visit time or it wasn't. You don't get to pop in and out whenever you feel like. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't make much sense to me either. Okay. I thought maybe I missed something. No. Like, I was kind of thinking the same thing because I'm like, that's not how that works. Yeah. No. Amanda, guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time for me to pick out my Fat Fit Fun selections. Oh my gosh, you were so excited with the last box. What are you going to get this time? I love Fat Fit Fun. Seriously, I've been using it for over a year. And at first, I was like, do I really want to, you know, spend money on that? Yes. I know how you excited get you over two hundred dollars worth of products for only forty nine ninety nine, and it's once a quarter. That's not bad at all. No, not at all. One of the items that I'm getting in my spring box is a light therapy, anti-wrinkle light. That I've seen them listed other places for well over $100, and that's, that's going to awesome. be included in my box. They also have robes, different lotions, sprays. There's a really cute umbrella on there. Tons of things for you to pick out. You're making me want one. You could go to our website, pure54podcast.com. And just go under the savings tab and click the get offer button under the FabFitFun. Make sure to use promo code rainbow and you get $10 off your first box. That's a deal. It's amazing. So go check out our website, pure54podcast.com and make sure to use promo code rainbow for $10 off your first box. And you're going to love it. Do you have an idea for a podcast, but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. How did Franco and Liz's heat get turned off so quickly? They have not been talking about money problems. I get that they're trying to make them more identifiable with the regular people. Absolutely. And that's awesome. But realistically, Liz wasn't having money problems before Franco Thank came you. along. Thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking. And she was a single mom. And she was paying her stuff. So Franco moving into the same house that she already moved in, or that she already lived in, it's not like they upgraded to some $300,000 house Although, or something like that. Although, if she was getting some kind of state assistance for her energy bill, she could possibly not qualify after she got married because Franco was working. That's true, but they still give you time. Okay. You get a 10-day shut-off notice. Right. And... You, you have to go calm. months and months. Right. You have you have to be, especially during the winter time. I was going to say, and there's <laughs> minors in the household. They're not going to shut it off. At right. least in Pennsylvania, which I thought that was just like standard. I thought, I thought it was too. Right. They can't cut it off till winter's over. And you call them and you say, hey, listen, my husband was himself <laughs> for months <laughs> on end and wasn't working. So our income was only this. And they work with you. It's not right. their intention to leave you without heat. I figured they were without heat because it was a plumbing, not a plumbing issue, but a heating issue. And that was why there was no heat. Did they say shut it off or they shut it off because of issues? Well, because Scotty said, because Franco went to Scotty for the money. Right. And said so the pipes and froze because there was no water running through them. They didn't take a shower? I don't know. That was a lot of stuff to go wrong at once. And... Pipes freeze. I mean, and they do it even when oh, you're living in the house. Yes, exactly. I just, I don't know. Elizabeth should also be getting child support from Lucky. Yep. 
child support from Jason, who you know he's not letting his kid's house become in shambles because didn't he buy that house for her to begin with? I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh. After her other one burnt down. What did insurance just rebuild the house? But it was going to take time. So he bought her the new one. Okay. You don't remember that? No. Okay, I'm pretty sure. I won't swear to it, but I'm pretty sure he bought her that house because the other one burnt down or there was something wrong with it or whatever. So she, she should be getting child support from both of them. And then I would assume that she'd get some kind of social security or something for Cameron because his dad's deceased. I have no idea about so any of that. I just feel like between... You get social security if a child's parent's deceased? I thought so. Am I wrong? I don't know. I have no idea. That I don't know. I mean, I don't know that for a fact. But I thought you got something. There's some type of assistance, I thought. Maybe it depends on how much I they were. I don't know. I don't know. So you've been cutting Cam out of the picture. She's a nurse. She should be getting child support from Lucky and Jason. You know you that still Jason's have not financial living. hardships with. Financial hardships, absolutely. Your whole house falling apart at once. I don't. With no warning. And this is the first time we're ever hearing about it. Exactly. Yeah. Tomorrow, you're not going to call me and say, my heater broke, my pipes all froze, and my electricity got shut off. Well, then Scotty says that he's going to put his house on the market. And I was like, you can take out a home equity line of credit. Right. You don't need to sell your house. Right. To give your And that's what Franco said at first. Do you have any assets to get a loan? And Scott jumped right to, oh, I'll sell my house. That doesn't make any sense. No. Then where's he going to live? Right. So the whole story, they needed to, whoever wrote that. Has never had money trouble? <laughs> Maybe that's what the problem is. I don't know. They just needed to look at it from different angles a little bit. A car accident where her car got totaled and they didn't have money to buy a new car, that right. would have made perfect sense. And you have to go find what you can with what you got from the settlement. And- exactly. That would have been a great storyline to show a struggle because I feel like a lot of people are in that situation. Your whole house does not fall apart at once with no warning signs. Right. Right. That you need a hundred thousand dollars, and not for nothing. Typically, they do when they're having difficult weather. You have it on the show, right? And so they've never had, you know, yeah. oh, it's so cold, the pipes are freezing, exactly, you know, or something. So, like you said, good for them for trying to, but there's still a gap there. There's yeah. still they, they missed some some spots, just a bit. We may have gone way too far into that, but That's okay. I, I really, I did. Those are all my thoughts whenever I saw it. I, look, I have a whole little paragraph here. Very right? good. <laughs> so I wrote, Devin Joss are going to need to be homeschooled soon anyway. <laughs> yes. That was really ironic, listening to her talk about, I'm going to miss this, and I'm going to miss that, and I don't want to be home for all this time. And then Trina saying, no, she doesn't want to be homeschooled. And I thought, yep. oh, if this was a real world story, yeah, you're being homeschooled anyway. How about Carly being dumb enough, though, to ask what teacher Jocelyn wants? Like, we didn't already know where that was coming from. I don't even want to get into this again, because they better not have no. it become inappropriate. Mm-mm. And yeah. that's it. Right. End of conversation. We're already done with that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Let's move it along. She has a crush on the teacher. We got it. Done. Yep. Let's go. So Trina and Cam, that was cute. It was. So many people were giving them such a hard time on social media. And I'm like, um, it was their, I know it wasn't Trina's first kiss. Right. So I forgot that she planted one on Dev. So that was my fault. And I did update the posts. But it was still their first kiss together. Your first Correct. kiss with someone new is a little awkward. And there was a lot of emotions behind why they were kissing. I mean, it was thankfulness that they were alive. They, you know, it was just, it was a lot. Yes. And so we posted on Instagram asking for other people to share their first kisses with us because they're not all great. They're not all passionate and especially at that age. Right. You don't know what you're, you most (laughs) don't know what they're doing. (laughs) Right. And let's be thankful that. They're letting these kids have innocence at that age. Exactly. Because correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the age that Robin was when she was with Stone? Mm -hmm. So let's be thankful that Trina and Cam are slowing it down. Just not good at kissing. They'll figure it out. So you and I both shared ours. Do you want to say yours? Mine, I think I was expecting like what we're talking about here, that magic where you just kind of instantly look at each other and fall together in this perfect whatever. I perhaps watched too much TV back in that time. So it was to my boyfriend at the time. 
we had just had our first date. He walked me up to the door, but then he asked me, is it okay if I kiss you? That's kind of sweet though. No, I was so annoyed because I felt like you just, burned all the magic. We were supposed to look at each other and just tilt our heads perfectly and it was supposed but to happen. But what if you didn't want to be kissed? Mm, then I feel like he would have known that already. Just by body language and the way the date went and that kind of stuff. We had a nice date. Like we held hands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So by the time that you got to my front door, I felt like you knew it was okay to kiss me. So I mean, it was, again, it was polite, perfect gentleman and all that. But at that time, I just wanted it to be you knew you needed to kiss me or whatever. So he kissed me. It was fine. It it wasn't, you know, fireworks and whatever. But again, yeah. I was 15. It was first kiss. I was 13 and we were taking the bus to the mall and we were sitting on the back of the bus. And I swear he was trying to like swallow my head. It was absolutely <laughs> disgusting. It was, ugh. I don't know how I ever kissed anyone again. But my husband kissed us on our, kissed us. Kissed us. My husband kissed me on our first date and I told him, I was like, that kind of was a put off for me because I'm like, slow down. Really? Uh huh. One kiss. Yeah. At the end of the date. Mm hmm. Huh. Okay. I was just like, okay, whoa well, boy. I feel like you can feel if it's there or not. I have been on first dates that have not ended in a kiss. I mean, I kissed him back and it's not that I didn't enjoy it, but I was like, the fact that I don't know. See, I feel like as an adult, you can just kind of, read the situation i've had first dates that i didn't want to kiss them and so you know a nice hug okay bye see ya yeah. or whatever <laughs> a handshake <laughs> i've never done a handshake oh i have i've done the like backing away okay i'll see ya and then you know scamper off to your car or whatever but i feel like a kiss you just kind of know so cinnamon girl said her boyfriend was her best friend's cousin and he tasted like a cigarette in his Ew. Uh, yes. Blah. Dasha, 27, we were 14 at a house party. The song playing in the background was Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. Oh, wow. I was nervous, and I knew after that first glorious kiss that he was not the one. <laughs> See, she, like, felt it or didn't feel it in that case. Karma spar Sparkle, it was gross. Pretty sure he had just smoked a full pack of cigarettes, stuck Ugh. his tongue down my mouth on the skating rink dance floor, which yeah. skating rinks were the best. They were. My sister saw what happened and promptly whooped his derriere or face, one in the same. Thankfully, all that kissing after that day was much better than my first. Nova Fairfax, just the thought of my first kiss makes me nauseated. Probably why the reactions were so, so colorful. Let's remember that they're kids. I was scared for them. I could have sworn Cam was about to kiss Joss, which we'll get into in a second. And then Jeannie Andy said, it was a sweet little kiss, and then my dad started flipping on and off the porch light. <laughs> but my favorite is so sweet. Jeanette, 21, 28, June 1st, 1980. I was 11 years old, and he was 13, still together and still kissing. That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. That's adorable. I love you guys. That's I, I love yes. it. That is 11 and 13. We want your story. But yeah, so, I mean, kisses are awkward. Let them be kids. But then, so I don't know if Cam was going to tell her, tell Joss how he felt about her, or maybe how he's clarified about Trina. I think he was going to tell her about Trina. That's kind of where I was going. And not for nothing, I mean, we, we've we all wanted Cam and Joss for how long? For so long. But it's... Especially if she's going to go towards this whole crush on the teacher that we're hoping they don't explore... Cam would just end up getting his heart broken anyway. Yeah. Again, she already rejected him for Oscar. We don't need to keep doing this to poor Cameron. But yeah, so, and that's kind of where, because he's like, my mind was clear and blah, 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 you know, and I agree. I think that he was going to say, yeah, and I see Trina in a new light, you know, right? maybe not like that, but along those lines. So I loved Portia telling Curtis, I can see you're doing some math. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he is. I said that last week. <laughs> the whole world's doing that math because 17 years is just a little too close there, girlfriend. Okay, and she had an affair with Curtis while Taggart was gone. Is that what we're to mm -hmm. assume? Yeah, because he said she didn't tell him that she was married. Right. So he just found out that she was married when they were together? I guess so. Oh, that's bad. Although Trina has been in Fort Charles for how long? 
And he's just now seeing her mom. Like you've said before, she wouldn't have been at Kelly's. She wouldn't have been at whatever. Okay. We can't change the writing on that. No. My favorite line. Yours was that. Mine was, no, mom, I broke out of jail and then came to jail whenever Britt was talking to Lee. That was so funny. That was. That didn't really, like, go anywhere. We're still going to have to wait for Spinelli to figure out how it is that Liesl was convicted of something she didn't do and all that. But I did like how Anna drew the parallel between Peter and Jason. That was a good point. It It was a very good point. It was a good point, but I wrote down why is... Jason even entertaining Anna. It's not like you're going to make her see your side because she's, it's Robin's mom. But that is the only reason. She's never going to say, oh, I understand now. It's not going to happen. He's going to have to get the hardcore proof. This is what went down for her to even acknowledge that maybe the WSB had it wrong, which I don't feel like that was really the WSB that came up with that. They no. had a list of people and she pushed for one. What was the point of Harmony in the car? When she first got there, I thought they were going to say there was a connection between Brando and her. So did I, and there definitely wasn't. And I thought, first of all, even if if they were going to make that connection, why would he tell her to come to the garage that Sonny and Jason were bringing him to? That doesn't make any sense. So I was glad that's not where they went. Mm -hmm. But then when they had no knowledge of each other, the conversation was just kind of, I'm assuming it's to get us to the point that Jason is going to be aware that She's caught up in some shady stuff, but that was a really roundabout, weird way to bring it up. Or do you think that she was going there to talk to Jason, but didn't know this guy, and so she was... Mm, she no. seemed really uncomfortable around Jason. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That whole scene just felt kind of useless. But the big thing about the car is that she's obviously been given a car by someone who can... Right. Or she's getting money on the side, which we know. Yes. Or we don't know that she's getting money, but we know that she's... That's an outside resources that she's tapped into. Which is another dumb decision. If you're trying for people not to notice you, even if you needed a car, you go buy an older style vehicle. You mm-hmm. don't show up in a souped up 2019. I don't know what kind of car it was. But I don't either. I just picture something fancy. Right. Nope. Or brand new. Right, right out of jail. That doesn't happen. No. No. I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. I don't think we're missing anything else. I don't think so either. I don't think that much happened this week because we dwelled on a lot of pointless. It wasn't pointless, <laughs> though. You know what I mean. The fact I that think that they did a really good job of moving along the stories that they were talking about. Yes. Instead of hopping all over the place because we had a tiny bit of TJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which. <laughs> oh, you turned on his Find My app. Right? Can't the cops do that? Yeah. Can't a mother who is paying the bill do that? Yeah. Okay. And then you get all snippy with Sam about it. You're lucky that she gave you the information. Sam normally would have just gone right there and looked for him. Right. And not even had a conversation with you. Yep. So you're welcome for that common courtesy. Yeah. I don't know. So weird. I'm glad that Jocelyn doesn't want to go back to Australia, though. Yes. That was good. Yes. I figured they couldn't let her do that with it becoming summer. Oh, Maxie! We totally forgot to talk about Maxie. Lucy made me really mad. Yep. Okay. As long as we're all on the same page. She has been after Maxie to work with, and to do that right in front of her. Exactly. Right in front of... And then Jax, yeah. And said, yeah, I did say that, but things have changed. Say that. Right. Take responsibility for what you said. Mm Mm-hmm. So do you think now that she called her and said, oh, I have a different investor, sure, I'll hire you, that Max is going to go that way, or she's going to work out with you now? I don't know, because I can't see. Maxie is very good at not blurring lines when it comes to her job. Mm -hmm. I think that she would actually be okay working for Valentine. Right. And being able to not think about the fact that that was her best friends, you know, yeah, issue because she needs a paycheck. Right. You know, she needs to support her child and Lulu should understand that as long as Valentine also does not try to. True. And, and I, I feel like Valentine wouldn't do that either. No. So as long as they're able to maintain their professional distances and not blur into each other's personal lives, that's what I was going for. Yes. You know, I hope she does. It'll be a good storyline. Change it up a little. Yeah. Spinelli kind of over really, really overreacted. Yeah, he did. 
And then he didn't do anything about it. I expected him to swoop in, grab her, and leave. They, like, stayed there and played. Mm -hmm. That was dumb. We're second-guessing every single... What, were you going to send her home hopped up on chocolate chips? Uh Uh-huh. Right. But I was also just here doing a favor, you know? Exactly. And he got you a beer. I love that he didn't drink it, though. Yeah. (laughs) That was funny. And he didn't even, like, cheers him. He was like, okay, yeah, thanks. He is trying. He is, but we're never going to like him because we know he's a slime ball. Yeah. So. I'm disappointed that we don't like him anymore. I'm sorry. Because I did. Okay. I'm sorry for your loss. I know. Jeez. This show, I'll tell you. <laughs> Tears your heart out. It does. I don't think I have anything else, though. No, I think that that's definitely it. So on Thursday's episode of the Port Charles 411, we're going to be interviewing Ella Ramaseri, who plays Scout, and her mom, Stephanie. She's so cute. I can't wait to talk to her. Yes. So we're going to have a little fun chat with her. And that will be Thursday's episode. <laughs> do, do, do. Reality check. I feel like, again, our reality is the same. I feel like everyone's reality is yeah. the same this week. This coronavirus is just, it's unreal, but it's real. Yeah. It's, it's a weird reality that we're living in right now. It is. Which is why we need our escape of General Hospital. Oh, you told me the other day, because I was like, how much more do they have left to tape? Or I, have they had? Yes, I read they have seven more weeks, but okay. I don't know what the jumping off point from that was. Okay. I don't know either. I don't. Like, we don't know when they ta- when did they last tape. Right. Yeah. Although I did talk to Wiley's mom. <laughs> Wiley's mom. Wiley's That's real mean. mom. <laughs> and she said that the boys, they stopped rapping the Monday before. Chloe okay. said she might have coronavirus because they're not testing her because of her age and because she's not showing all of the symptoms. Right. But she doesn't remember if Chloe was there or not on the, their last day of taping. So not entirely sure, but it sounds positive that they were probably not around her. Right. So, when she was sick. Right. Yeah. So, are you doing anything fun during quarantine? I am cleaning, yep. which is not fun, but I needed it. My room is just the catch-all for everyone in my house. If they've outgrown it, if they don't like it this week, if it needs washed, if, I don't know, it's the wrong color today, who knows? They just dump it in my room. So, literally, my whole entire floor is just clothes and crap and whatever of this article, this backpack, this whatever. And all the time I'm like, oh, I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to clean that up. But it's no fun because you have to wash the stuff and then put it in the Mm -hmm. Goodwill bag and or the giveaway bag or the bin for next year or whatever. And so it's just taken over my room. So I think I seriously did like 10 loads of laundry this weekend, but I folded it all up and it's in its designated little area. And so you can see my floor again (laughs) in my room and I'll work my way through the rest of the house as the week goes on. I wanted to do, the kids are with their dad this weekend. So I wanted to do my room while they were away. Mm -hmm. So that I can enlist their help for the rest of the week. Yeah. So that's that. That's really We're making it. a game out of it. So we haven't started anything academic. I was all, we're going to make sure that they have something to do every day. And then I was like, no, the first couple of days, we're not going to do that. I'm going to let them. Yeah. I'm treating this like a spring break. They Just need to decompress tracks. from, I'm sure that they're feeling some stress. Oh, definitely. You know, and then our school district came out with the rules or the guidelines of how they're going to be learning from home. Mm-hmm. Should we go further than Friday, which I think we are. Yes. And so I'm just like, you know what? We're just going to let them still, I don't want to say kind of chill, but we're focusing more on life skills. Mm -hmm. And I am totally making like a double dare game out of it. It's going to be like a mishmash of double dare and jeopardy and like all kinds of things where I'm going to have life skills questions for certain points. And then they're going to have physical challenges of things like, go bring me the whatever. (laughs) Yep. You're prompted by, (laughs) prompted by, mom, where is this? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you should know where this is. Yes. And then it was, you know what? Right now we have a really good opportunity. We're kind of stuck in the house. What life skills can we get knocked out of the way that, I don't know. I guess I feel like we just learned them, but the way that they're teaching now Oh, they're they not have... learning them as they go, and we're we don't know, right? And we're really hands-on moms. Yeah, I mean we're not helicopters, but we're definitely 
involved yeah. in our kids' lives. And it's just like, you hear some of these things and you're like, how do you not know what that is? Well, they're going to learn. Mm-hmm. So I love it. We're going to learn balancing checkbooks, stuff like that. Although last night I taught the entire family how to pop popcorn in a saucepan with oil because my husband didn't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that either. So okay. I'm totally with your husband. Um, he had no idea what I was even talking about, though. Did you at least know you could buy individual? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love him. But, like, he was going to the store last night, and I said, well, can you get popcorn kernels? He's like, yeah, what kind, like, what flavor? I was like, no, 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 just the kernels. He's like, like, in the bag? I was like, no. I was like, well, yeah, it's in a bag. <laughs> and he said, I was like, you know, the kind that you cook on the stove. He's like, like, Jiffy Pop? I was like, no, the bag of kernels. He's like, what are you talking about? I had to get a picture and send it to him and say, it's going to look like this. Oh, wow. Okay, no. So I knew that you could buy those, but I also know that there's popcorn poppers. So to me, you dump them in the popcorn popper and then they pop it and whatever. I do not know how to just do it on the stove. How do they not pop out everywhere? You put a lid. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I will teach you too. But I mean, so it was well, fun. start doing a YouTube channel, Life Skills with Shannon, and you can just teach me everything that I don't know like that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So that's it. It's good. I like seeing everyone's posts about really enjoying their family time and playing games. And I know the kids can drive you crazy because they're kids and that's what they do. But at the end of the day, we need to all appreciate that we're home and we're safe. And what we're doing is keeping everyone else safe. And stay home. Yes. As much as you can. Please Please. stay home. It's, it's not a joke. You know, it's. And, like, there's a thousand different Facebook memes, but the one says, you realize the longer you don't listen to the rules, the longer we're going to have to do this. Exactly. And that's 100% true. Stay it's exactly home. what we tell our kids. Like, if you just focused on doing it right the first time, you're not going to have to redo it and redo it and redo it. You know, and, you, of course, you're going to make mistakes, you know. but Right. And some things you have to go out for. Obviously, you need food and medicine for allergies and all that kind of stuff. But stay home. Yes. When you don't have to be out. Yes. So, I did see some fun things. Um, people were saying to put a bear in your window and then the little kids go around the neighborhood on a bear hunt Aww. and spot the bear. And that if you make a rainbow cut out and put it on your window, it's to let all the first responders know that you appreciate their service. So they see a rainbow. Oh, so, yes. When I get Madeline back, we're going to do some of those things. And people are writing with chalk on their driveways. So I've been seeing a, a lot, lot of chalk. Read yes. the different things. So. Lots of cute ideas. You know, you can get out and have walks and enjoy right. nature, and that's a fun way to to make it cute. Yeah. So, and I've really enjoyed seeing all the zoos and museums and everything yes. are doing videos and so many resources. We talked about this last week, but so many companies are doing free resources to keep kids busy. Because I mean, I'm in the same boat where I'm trying to work from home. Right. It's drying up right now because so. We're not allowed in the office. We're not allowed to work in the office. We can still show houses as long as both are willing to see. But, I mean, honestly, most people don't want to. Right. You know, there's ways of doing things virtually, which I've been able to do, but haven't done for this purpose. I've done it for other things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to run out of things to do, you know. But there's a lot of people that still have to work full time from home and somehow now be a parent. and Or, like, (laughs) there are already parents. But somehow also be a teacher and mm-hmm. keep their kids occupied. And that's really difficult to do. It is. Yeah, I do not. Work from home is not a vacation job. Right. It's not. Yes. It's hard. You have I... to be really focused and yes. Yeah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so that's our soapbox. <laughs> our TED Talk. <laughs> Welcome to our TED Talk. <laughs> but we will meet you back here on Thursday when we talk to Ella Ramaseri. So have a good week and we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pier54podcast at gmail.com. 